When my daughter was murdered in Parkland, Joe Biden called to share in our family's grief. I quickly learned about his decency and his civility, but I also learned about his toughness and how he's beaten the NRA. Together with the other victims of gun violence and our nation's youth, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will take on the NRA again and win. Let's win back our freedom to live without fear. Florida cast 57 votes for Bernie Sanders and 192 votes for our next president, Joe Biden. <laughs> that was Fred Guttenberg nominating Joe Biden for president for the Florida delegation during the Democratic National Convention. Fred has now written a new book entitled Find the Helpers, What 9-11 and Parkland Taught Me About Recovery, Purpose, and Hope. And he joins us now once again. So, Good to see you. Fred, thank you so Good much morning. for being with us. Let me just start by asking, let me start by asking uh, how you and your family are getting by. You know, this is something that Joe Biden talks about so much, uh, losing his children and the daily struggle it is. I wonder if you have any words for parents who are dealing with this, probably, you know, now. That, uh, that, that, that uh, unfortunately, far too many have to go through the hell that you went through. Well, and, and, and especially now during the pandemic, um, where we're going to have 200,000 people who are going to die, mm. who were sick alone, who are going to die alone. And we have an occupant in the White House who wants to minimize what that actually means to families. Joe Biden gets it. Um, he got it when it happened to my family. Um, he reached out, I think it was about 10 days after my daughter was killed, and then I had the chance to meet him in person as well. This family, I'm sorry, but this country deserves to know what my family has seen of what I hope will be our next president. A guy who has inspired me to go forward. A guy who spoke to me about grief, what getting through grief would look like, how my family and those of us go through grief differently and to be prepared for that. Um, and I thought, you know, okay, a big tragic event, he's reaching out to me, but I have come to find out he's done this for people all across this country, his entire career, reaching out in moments when no one else knows to help them get through it. Back in April, I wrote an op-ed um, comparing uh, Joe Biden and the Karnakin of the White House on how they would respond to the coronavirus. Sadly, we've seen that act out. Um, the current occupant is doing things that will get people sick and get people killed. And mm -hmm. Joe Biden is um, reaching out, hoping to give them hope on how to go forward. And I, for one, uh, am thankful for him. I wonder if um, you heard about uh, the part of the Woodward book where Donald Trump actually became aware of just how horrific uh, the Parkland shooting had been and was was uh, shattered uh, temporarily, at least uh, just completely jarred and, in fact, um, snapped harshly at his son when his son seemed, even in Donald Trump's eyes, seemed to try to minimize what had happened there. Were, were you surprised uh, by the president's response or more surprised by the inaction that followed? So I've not heard about that part of the book. Um, but no, I'm not surprised about the inaction that followed. Listen, that's who he is. The day that I buried my daughter, the morning that I buried her, he put out a tweet that was dishonest and he knew it. He blamed her murder on the Russia investigation. And he had already met with the FBI. He had already known the truth about why her murder happened. But he put out that tweet. It is who he is. It's why I refuse to use his name. I refuse to give his brand oxygen. He is the current occupant of the White House. But starting that morning, it's where I became really aware of how he handles things. And then we all saw what happened about a week later when he sat with Republican and Democratic members of the House and Senate. He even called out the Republicans on their failure to do anything about gun violence. But then he took a call from the NRA that night, and he's never, ever, ever gone back 
to that possibility where he and I could have been doing something together or with other fighters for this cause. He chose a different path. And everything he has done since then has been incendiary, has led to more gun violence. At the start of this pandemic, he unleashed a gun surge on this country through his administration. That's who he is. We can't have can I, more time with him in the White House. Can I ask you about other uh, representatives? Uh, were you reached out to uh, by senators? Uh, did Rick Scott, uh, who I think was governor then, but has Rick Scott he, he reached out to you? Mark, Marco Rubio, Governor DeSantis, have they reached out to you, been respectful to you and tried to work with you? Listen, in the aftermath of what happened to my daughter, um, uh, and Rick Scott was governor at the time, I was very thankful for his leadership. He was an example in that moment of how, even as a Republican, you can do something about gun violence. Um, and we passed gun safety measures in Florida three weeks later. Sadly, he has moved on from that moment. Sadly, he does not really talk about that moment in his um, history anymore and everything he has done since then has led me to believe um, in any other time he would never do it again. Then there's Rubio. Listen, he's he's been useless on this issue, let's face it. Now, let me ask you uh, finally about Jamie. Um, when I talked to Joe Biden during the campaign, um, the low point of the campaign, in fact, I think it was, when, when he wasn't doing well, uh, I asked him, uh, why he ran, asked him uh, about Bo, uh, whether he thought about Bo when he was going out campaigning. And uh, Joe Biden said that everything he did, he did because of Bo's memory, that Bo pushed him forward. And what he said as he started to tear up was, I just hope that he's proud of me. I'm wondering how much Jamie is driving you and how much she still lives through you and your efforts. Listen, um, Joe, my daughter stands on my shoulder every second of every day pushing me forward. Um, I, before February 14, 2018, I was just a goofy dad of two kids. That's who I was, for better or for worse. And now I find myself in this place where because of what happened to my family, I want to do whatever possible to reduce gun violence. The truth is I live with guilt that my voice wasn't part of this before it was my kid. I always taught my kids, and I talk about this in the book, you always do what's right. Don't ever worry about how hard it is if you think it's right. I know doing something to reduce the gun violence death rate in this country is the right thing to do. And I don't intend to shut up. I don't intend to stop. And I'm thankful every second of every day for the amazing helpers along the way who have carried me, even you and Mika. I'll never, ever, ever forget that first interview a week after my daughter died, where I think we were scheduled for four or five minutes and, and you kept me on for it was about 20, 21 minutes because you knew I just, I needed to talk. Um, and we were emotional on that interview together, but I knew that day, everything I ever, it was my first real experience with media in that way. And you always hear, especially from the current guy in the White House, ah, oh, media stings, media's the problem. No, you showed me you were decent. You gave me hope that morning. and and. And it's been that way ever since. People across this country, whether it be new friends, new neighbors, media, politicians, entertainment, everywhere I go, I have hope. And, and so if you want to know why I am fighting so hard now for November 3rd, I want to get back to a place where we can have hope in this country and do what's best and bring back decency, civility, and safety. Well, you know, um, we we think about you so much, and I think you probably know because you've probably heard from them. But our community, uh, our family that that watch this show, 
uh, they are a family. And Mika and I feel it every time we go out. And I can't tell you how many of them ask us about you and about your family. And they remember Jamie. And they're grateful uh, that she is standing on your shoulders, pushing you forward every step of the way. Uh, again, uh, whether you're trying to save Republican families or Democratic families or independent families from going through the pain that you've had to go through. I can tell you there's so many people in our family watching this show right now that thank you for everything that you're doing. And the, the new book is, is Find the Helpers, what 9-11 in Parkland taught me about recovery, purpose, and hope. Fred Guttenberg, thank you so much. We will thank see you, you again soon. Thank, thank you so much, Fred. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.